Good morning uh, to those who are joining us from India. Good afternoon to those who are joining us from Singapore and ASEAN. Uh, my name is Sriram Chakravarti. I'm a partner at Raja and Thaan. It gives me great pleasure and honor to chair this session titled India's ASEAN Engagement Needs a Digital Push. I have a stellar panel with me whose expertise ranges from ships to computer chips. Uh, we have with us Gulu Lalwani, Chairman Royal Phuket Marina, Thailand. We have Bill Newitt joining us from Vietnam. He's founder and CEO of ABS Institute, specializing in edutech. We have Alok Patnia, who's based in Singapore, but right now in India, managing partner of Tax Mantra Global. We have Jason Vilupilai, partner of InSync Partners, who's joining us from Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. And we might have an additional panelist, Jolan Desai, joining us from Phnom Penh. He's not here right now, but hopefully he'll join soon. He's the Managing Director of American Dental University at Phnom Penh. So as you can see, we've covered almost the entire ASEAN countries with our panelists. So geographically, we're very well covered. And with Alok representing us from India, I dare say we've covered both sides of the bridge, both from India and ASEAN. So with that, uh, in terms of the panel, let me just set the panel stage and then the synopsis of what we want to cover. And then we'll get, we'll do a quick uh, dive into the session itself. So the title, as it says, India ASEAN Engagement Needs a Digital Push, is really about India ASEAN engagement. As you're aware, Prime Minister Modi at the previous two India ASEAN summits in 2019, 2020, has reiterated the centrality of ASEAN from an India's perspective, both from a geopolitics, security, and economic standpoint. This is very important. And what he ha what essentially the policymakers are talking about is enhanced connectivity between India and ASEAN for the aspirations of economic development and the economic targets of 300 billion in terms of intra-India ASEAN trade to take place. However, connectivity has largely been focused on physical connectivity and maritime connectivity. But given COVID and given restrictions and impediments to physical connectivity, it is perhaps time for both India and ASEAN to pivot towards digital connectivity. The timing might actually be very fortunate and right, given that ASEAN is embarking on its own digital master plan for 2025 ASEAN is poised to be one of the five largest digital economies in the world in the years to come, at least in this decade. And of course, India's prowess in the digital economy and the technology space is well known. A case in point is the listing of Zomato yesterday, a tech platform that has, as I read in today's paper, has done very well with market capitalization and has spurred 18 millionaires in a day. This augurs well, but of course, India's renown in the tech sector goes beyond this fintech, edutech, health tech, and other areas where I think India can contribute to ASEAN. So that is essentially the synopsis of what we will be discussing in this session. Uh, what I would like to do now is invite my panelists to share their views, one on India ASEAN engagement in the first half of this session, and what they see in terms of promises from a digital perspective. To start off, can I ask Gulu to jump in and take the stage and give his views? Gulu, floor is yours. Yeah. Well, Priyam, having heard your introduction, there's no, it's a no-brainer that with India's expertise in digital all over the world, that there should be much closer engagement with ASEAN, between India and ASEAN. But my feeling is, because India, Indian software companies are a bit spoiled, having broken through in the United States, which is the biggest market for them, and Europe, where they're getting much higher margin, they seem to have overlooked or ignored, whatever you want to call it, ASEAN, which is at their doorstep. And I feel the field competition from countries like Vietnam, which is already in ASEAN, and Vietnam is Getting quite, I'm hearing about Vietnam more and more in software. So they feel the margins are very tight in Asian. This is my guess because I come from 
connect on background myself. And otherwise, there's no reason. Maybe there needs to be some kind of a push because I think India is ideally positioned to help ASEAN to become more than number five. You're predicting ASEAN will be number five in digital. I think it could be number three with Indian India's help as well. So I think we have to find a way to get more interaction between India and ASEAN on the government level and prime minister level. Fine. I see a lot of interaction between the Navy, the Phuket, naval ships from um, uh, Asian, Asian countries going to India and India coming here. But we need to get something moving to maybe the other panelists have some ideas how we can make this uh, more interaction between the digital marketing companies from Bangalore and Hyderabad and so on come here, maybe some more trade shows, which used to be very popular from Singapore, there's no trade shows happening at the moment, there's an online trade show. But the room, I mean, it's ideal in India, engagement is definitely needed, and we are here to help with a digital push. Thanks, Gulu. Uh, and before I ask, request the next speaker to come on, just a quick welcome to Jwalanth, who's just joined us. Jwalanth, welcome. I did introduce you at the beginning, uh, just before you joined. Very happy for you to have joined us, and we look forward to hearing your valuable insights as well. Uh, after Gulu, Kanesan, would you like to take the floor? And then yep. maybe I'll invite Alok, Bill, and Jolanth in that order. Kanesan, over to you. Thank you, Sri. Uh, good day, gentlemen, uh, ladies. Uh, I, I think let's take it from a, a few different perspectives. I think the, the, the overall uh, uh, landscape of the ASEAN-India relationship has uh, come off the high apps that they had in, in the, in, in, in the early, early 2000s. I think we progressed a lot uh, in terms of the G2G relationship and we had a lot of interaction, a lot of summits and a lot of G2G initiatives. However, there seemed to be a decline uh, in relationships uh, at G2G and, um, and it's been pers precipitated by the one bad, one road uh, initiative of China. So that's the geopolitical situation. Let's not get into that. I think there are other, other sessions. But as with that in the background, we also see the B2B interaction has not taken sufficient growth. Uh, ASEAN seem to be in a very low level in, in terms of a lot of Indian large multinational. Zomato, for example, has got Kazana investment, but you don't see the Zomato presence in ASEAN. In the really sad century. Um, Tata Computer Services has been here a long time. HCL has been here a long time. But you don't see them as an iconic, Indian iconic uh, uh, presence in, in ASEAN. Whereas if you look, if you look at the Chinese, uh, from the likes of Huawei to the, the, the likes of uh, uh, Alibaba, they have made their presence. So you find that now the Indian, Indian side is. Uh, uh, virtually not present okay so the presence must be felt so the b2b needs to be up even the b2c to the consumers how much indian products are being sold on a b2c basis digitally to asean we don't see it enough it is a it is a fantastic market we have been trading for years about a few hundred years from the, the, time, the, the, the times of the early, well, from the great em, em, emperor Majapai and Vijayanagara. So the trade routes are there. What has gone wrong? The digital space should make it easier. So I think, I mean, besides outsourcing and supplying of talent, which is fantastic. I mean, uh, India is very well represented there. But in terms of investment, in terms of creativity, in terms of in, inviting new tech collaboration, uh, startup support, I think there's a lot that India can do. And India has the money to take the leadership, the private sector there. So we need to create a seedbed. I need, we need to get a very strong seedbed uh, um, uh, at ASEAN in uh, India level to say, OK, we are going to do this initiative. It could be just that it just could just be single, uh, single trading platform putting into another level uh, and then tying up with the banking side. And India is moving in 
tremendous space into the into the e money and money uh, digital banking so I, i leave it there i think that that is the scape i think yes it is very true that it needs a major push and it takes both parties i think we are looking to india india needs to look at asean as a, as a, as a, in a different and more uh more concerted matter more con- more concentrated manner uh because geopolitically china is taking the lead in asean thank you mm-hmm. thanks ganesh and very very valid points very interesting insights uh, alok uh, your thoughts thanks uh, sriram uh, so we are overjoyed in india uh, first of all because of what happened yesterday and it, it was landmark you rightly said the zomato got listed on the indian stock exchange and it is the first hyper uh, startup active startup to get listed and it closed with a valuation of more than 135 billion dollars so uh, and and and, I, and somewhere i connect that to the point which we are discussing today and that is that the indian startup ecosystem uh, when today we have more than 50 unicorns and the data says that we will be around 150 unicorn by 2025 today we are close to uh, 10% of the total unicorns on this planet are from india and 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 that's that's where to my understanding we we can integrate and and work together uh to my uh, and 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 the dream of having 300 billion target of bilateral trade between uh, asean and india i think digital play will be a big big play if if we want to achieve that uh and and we, the interesting points which we can talk about when we talk about digital play Uh, india's experience of upi payments unified payment interface in terms of the cross border seamless transfer uh, of funds between asean countries in terms of the digital partnership agreement which can which can be signed between india and the asean countries i i, I also talk about uh, how india and asean must facilitate and encourage its startups to integrate and and explore each other's market as i speak uh, 50% of the unicorns in india they either want to explore the asean market or they want to go and establish there to 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 ensure that they they are part of the larger asean con- uh, 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 economy similarly i i have interacted with so many startups and unicorns from asean from singapore and they have a very large interest in the indian economy uh, so i think with these points i i feel the digital uh, facilitation upi digital connectivity inter exchange of of startups giving startups access uh, to each other having some digital agreements which which will ensure that the asean one as a whole can can work together to create the largest digital economy which we are talking about really in that sense thanks a lot uh, very interesting points bill you want to follow good afternoon lady and gentlemen uh, i'm bill win well let's talk about digital transformation i think uh, it's time for indian how asian pacific region Vietnam to trans to do the digital time transfer formation in uh, production, uh, education, and other fields. As Indian have many expenses, huge expenses in software development, and it tie Indian help ASEAN, particularly Vietnam. to do the digital transformation thank you thanks bill jolan floor is yours hey hi thank you uh, shri ram for having me here and uh, 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 good morning everyone uh, the delegates and the audience uh, so uh, let me uh, share the background uh, it's a very important and a critical theme that we are discussing today uh, on the india's asean engagement and uh, that needs a digital push so uh, 
uh, I'm sitting in in Cambodia right now with uh, handling the the American University Technology Center uh, envisioned to have uh, providing the global platform for connecting the young entrepreneurs, providing the skills upgradation uh, along with the American University of Phnom Penh. So uh, India has a great uh, digital focus in economy and in form of uh, different uh, layers. Uh, the recent COVID has not left anyone unimpacted. Everyone, all countries in ASEAN or globally are impacted. So, uh, for example, what India developed to uh, cater the COVID vaccine and uh, the uh, COVID management uh, related IT infrastructure, uh, it is called as COVIN, uh, C-O-W-I-N. So, COVIN is uh, one of the IT product that India government pro created. And, uh, and it has been willingly, uh, government is providing to other ASEAN and other countries for uh, implementing it uh, in their uh, local countries. Uh, so that's an, uh, another uh, great way where India is trying to engage in, uh, in ASEAN and other countries. Uh, uh, because... Uh, Every problem today, as we see, which are defined under UN SDG goals, uh, and all the countries are formulating their economic policies around around uh, all the sustainability development goals. Uh, so most of these countries are focusing to uh, solve these challenges. And one of the common denominator of uh, uh, solving all these problems is digital. Uh, angle to it. So uh, a lot of young startups which are right now in India are uh, or have a great scope to replicate the same success story in the, in the countries like Indonesia, Vietnam, Cambodia, having a similar diaspora, uh, young population, uh, similar cultural societies, having great similarities. And uh, some of the examples that the uh, fintech related startups, for example, if I would give you one example, uh, are having a sandboxing opportunity by APIX, Epix, which is founded from Singapore. Um, and uh, and that's, again, an uh, interesting uh, concept of having a sandboxing for all digital startups from ASEAN to replicate for in India or in ASEAN countries. Thanks, Yolant. Uh, thanks, thanks for your insights. I want to delve a bit deeper into this issue, and perhaps I'll pick up from what Gulu and Kanesan said, because I think they made some really interesting points. I think across the board in this panel, we do agree there's a need for a digital push. I think uh, no one denies that. But Kanesan touched on a very important point, really in terms of competitiveness uh, or visibility. I think he used the word virtual visibility of Indian companies within the ASEAN. Uh, previously that was there, but what has happened? Why haven't Indian tech firms been able to extend, leverage, enhance their presence across ASEAN in terms of being more out there? And he made the comparison with Chinese firms. And I do agree with that. Uh, you see the likes of Huawei and others, or even Korean companies and Japanese companies who are whose presence is clearly both in a real and a virtual setting felt much more than, than in a sense of the Indian companies. And I'm going to pick uh, the views of the panel here. Gulu mentioned that one of the reasons could just be that, you know, ASEAN as compared to the Western world, perhaps from a ROI margin perspective, is not the same. And therefore, you know, the focus of Indian companies might be more towards the West or European countries. Uh, where the margins are better and therefore the focus there is greater rather than ASEAN. Is that really the reason or is there something beyond that? Uh, happy to hear the views of the panel. Uh, and maybe we can just start with Kanesan and Gulu and then we go around. Uh, Gulu? Yeah, the reason I say that is because, you know, it's known that Asian countries are very competitive. Therefore, for India, who's getting... If I was a software house in India, 
Western Bangalore or whatever. And I've got nice customers in the United States and Europe give me very nice margins. So my capacity is full with better margins. And yes, people Asian want my help. And I find I can't com be bothered competing with Vietnamese software houses, which are happy to work on very low margins because they don't have the opportunity to break into the United States where India was ahead of the other companies. So they've got a cushy situation. And of course, every successful company has a bottleneck of deliverables. So if they're getting high margin, they want to give their focus there first. And virtually every company does that when there's a capacity shortage, you know. So I feel that can be the only reason. Otherwise, we're next door here to India. And Indians love coming, to, especially to Thailand. I know there's a lot of uh, Indian weddings that are taking place here. So they feel close to uh, Asia. In fact, the most popular destination for Indians in number wise is here, is uh, Thailand and Dubai after that, and then Europe and America come much later. So, in every way, India is very close to ASEAN. So, why not here? I can only think of the margins. So, I'd like to hear other people's, other panels give their views. I can't see any other reason. Because we know Vietnamese are very competitive. And Bill's Vietnam, maybe he can say something about this. Uh, uh, it's good. I'm happy. I know Vietnamese companies have been able to compete with China in production. Many of my friends have moved their production from China into Vietnam. And they wish they did it much earlier. Efficient labor and fast. So I, that, that's my guess. And I'm convinced it can't be anything else. Yes, I it just needs some promotion. Eye opening, guys. Why are you ignoring your neighbors here? I think you're right. I mean, there's one thing is margins. Uh, um, I think the other thing is also uh, ASEAN has taken the lead in, in terms of the unicorns. Yeah. Uh, mm. I mean, in the sense, the unicorns came and uh, very little Indian involvement. <coughs> I, mean, I could be wrong. I could be wrong. But uh, in terms of capital, uh, but in terms of people, in terms of technology, maybe there was there was a lot of Indian involvement. But in terms of capital, in terms of leadership, uh, I, I think what's lacking is leadership in the digital space from the Indian side because ASEAN is too small for the leadership to look at it. So they need to have this. They need to have a digital brand in India for ASEAN. Somebody has to sit down and say, "Look, is ASEAN important to us politically?" If it is, then you want to be in the space to make sure that digitally you are a player. Because if not, you are just going to expose yourself and a flank open. And you're always worried about uh, Chinese influence. But if your presence is not here, then it's a you, you, classic, classic look is Sri Lanka. You know, when, when, when you didn't put your, your commercial interest there to protect yourself, Chinese, yes. uh, Chinese yes. influence came in. Uh, and right. You can't blame anybody, right? right. So right. India as a country and as a go the government should look at and say, hey, listen, the digital space is important. The 5G space is going to be where the next uh, challenge is going to be. We need to be there. Look, let's set up a task force to say digital brand India for ASEAN and create the hubs, create the projects that you're all together, Malaysian government, Singapore government, Thai government, you know, Took all your problems, put it there and say, look, can we do some problem? Somebody has to have the leadership. That's missing. So we've got two uh, insights, one in terms of margins, one in terms of leadership. Uh, would be very interested to hear from the others. And then, of course, Bill, I do want you to respond to the Vietnamese competition that Gulu talks about. So... Uh, maybe we hear from Alok and Jualan first, and then Bill uh, would be interesting to hear from you. Alok, so I I think it's 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 a it's a very natural uh, point of view. I tell you why. So uh, from from a customer perspective, if I am a uh, large scale IT company from India, and if I have to scale my operations, 
I talk about 10, 15, 20 years back, uh, there are only two geographies where I can see that I can have the right, uh, the, the clients who, who will be able to pay me well. And, and I agree to Gulu's thought of margin, and that would be US and uh, UK. Now, uh, if, if you talk about 10 years back, then there are other countries where, which are opening up where in, uh, they, they believe that the technology is the next big thing and they need to spend a lot of money on technology in building the right uh, tech. But today, if you talk about uh, what has happened uh, in uh, due to COVID and pandemic, uh, digital adoption has been accelerated by a decade, if not by two, uh, with, with data penetration increasing in Southeast Asia and ASEAN region. I think now you will see a lot of Indian companies because they, they, the businesses in ASEAN would also think about going digital. And when they seriously think about going digital, because in, the, in, in today's world, every business needs to be digital. And that's where the Indian IT companies will, will, will get into ASEAN because then they, they would also seize an opportunity to sign clients in ASEAN region. That's one part. That, that's from a client-centric situation. Uh, from from, from, from uh, whether we can have a development center in ASEAN, whether, whether we can create large branches and, and hire people from ASEAN, I think that has already started happening with what Philippines has done in the, in the BPO services or in the LPO services and uh, and today you see that most of the companies have have their bases in ASEAN but they are spreading I accept that it they're a little late but I, I, I think in next five years you will see ASEAN becoming a very important core part of the large IT companies in India also because the reason which I've already stated in terms of businesses now having that will to spend money on technology and also in terms of and I think language was also one barrier initially that is also going away with now large people uh, speaking English. If you talk about UK and US, uh, uh, it's very easy for Indian Indian businesses because India uh, is, is the largest English speaking nation in, on, on this planet. And it, it was very easy for Indian companies to go to a US or you, or you can expand there. Thanks a lot. Jolan, do you want to add? Yeah, a very uh, interesting conversation by the panelists. Uh, very interesting points from Mr. Lalwani and Mr. Uh, Kanesan and uh, Alok. Uh, so uh, what we are trying to figure out is that uh, how do we uh, uh, try to uh, get the India push, uh, digital push in the ASEAN. And uh, given the current scenario, what glo globally the crisis is all about COVID. And what we are trying to do is um, this is a time which we can utilize in our own interest, in our advantage, in terms of as India, while uh, what happened in 2000 in Y2K when uh, the IT skills were required and uh, Indian uh, digital and IT uh, companies and the skills were put on, uh, on use for solving the global crisis. And today we are in COVID crisis, the world is trying to fight with the global pandemic and digital uh, tool is one of the biggest tool to resolve the COVID crisis and move forward across all industries. So um, this is a very, we are at a very vantage point uh, and uh, in terms of India's uh, position in uh, digital push in ASEAN, the time is never before right as now. Uh, whether it is extending uh, the COVID management related digital tools and the startups working around the identity, unique digital identity across the citizens of different countries in ASEAN or whether it is uh, pushed through 5G and beyond uh, and utilizing the mobile internet for providing the fintech solutions. If you notice, ASEAN has one of the very prominent uh, group of countries with uh, a young population growing and uh, that also encompasses the uh, growing aspiration of the youth and uh, all digital uh, uh, startups and initiatives in this region uh, will be even for a great business interest. So definitely I'm with uh, Mr. Lalwani and Mr. Kanesan. Yeah. Thanks, Jolan. Bill, over to you. Uh, Vietnam I, I, is a competitor as well as uh, general India ASEAN push. Your thoughts? As, as Alok uh, mentioned, that the language is the, one of the barriers to enter ASEAN market. 
I, I think uh, instead of, instead of Indian firms enter Asian market and attract uh, the our company, uh, it's better that they have to, they may set up a joint venture firms, uh, collaborate, share the revenue, share the profit, and bring their advanced technologies to Asian country will be better. As in Vietnam, now we, we push uh, digital trans- transformation in production, education. From the education, that's so we also push the uh, digital transformation in education. So it would be better that to attract the servant to uh, uh, collaborate and win be more both sides. Rather than you enter the market by yourself and you have to fight a customer. At Ansan people, they know the market, they know the, they know the people over here. That would be better. Thank you. Thank you. Very, very interesting points. Um, and uh, maybe, maybe I can share some of my views on, on this point because I've been looking at this quite closely. Um, the reason I think, Ganesan, you're perfectly on point to say, you know, in terms of visibility, it's been uh, it's not been out there. And I have I think there are a couple of reasons for that. ASEAN as a construct, as a homogeneous construct, if you can call it that, has actually emerged only recently. Otherwise, you would be looking at I shouldn't say disparate, but essentially countries grouped together. It's not a EU. It's not a economic union in that sense. It is at best uh, uh, a group of countries together. Um, and so when, a, when an outsider look, looking to invest, he's not looking at a contiguous large market, but he's looking at quite a few countries which are joined together under you know, a kind of a union. So it does make it difficult. It, unlike looking at U.S., which is a very big market, huge opportunities to scale, and you're only dealing with one country's loss in that sense. You could incorporate out of New York or California, but essentially you service the entire country. Same with EU as well. You do have those benefits of scaling. So I think that could be one reason that, you know, Indian expertise has come in, but has staged within, you know, Singapore, Malaysia, Indonesia to a certain extent. Uh, The second is in terms of niche areas that, you know, I think Indians have uh, expertise. I mean, clearly financial sector is an area where there's considerable expertise. It was essentially in the services sector, but now Indian companies have products as well. And those products then can essentially be exported and then you do consulting around those products. And that tends to be in within the financial sector. There are some countries where the financial sector is quite evolved. Singapore, Malaysia, Indonesia, I would say. And then somewhere it's evolving. So again, your perspective of going and selling depends on the country's evolution at what stage it is. The third point that I want to look, and this is slightly moving now kind of a bit to the future. I think the the entire there's a paradigm shift, and I think COVID has contributed to that shift because no longer is it the old traditional mechanism of having products and services and products and services in established markets or niche industries, but it is changing significantly. Uh, The new Sunrise Industries, FinTech, HealthTech, EduTech that are coming, uh, I have uh, I have a data that in front of me, which essentially says that uh, I think this was a 2020 data that said that uh, by data labs in March 2020, 35 of the big ticket Indian startups have expanded or plan to expand to Southeast Asia. That's a huge number. And I think Alok mentioned this when he said, you know, the unicorns that are coming are looking at these <coughs> unicorns are essentially looking at very differentiated areas. <coughs> And it's in these areas where I think there's a lot of similarity between how India is growing and where ASEAN is growing. EduTech being a classic example. If you're planning to leverage and lift uh, primary school education essentially through digital means, I would see a lot of similarity between India and ASEAN as compared to, let's say, India and Europe or US. And the opportunities, therefore, are far bigger. But these opportunities are on volume. So the margin at, I think, someone from someone who wrote, you know, Profits at the bottom of the pyramid. This is a classic example where prof- probably profits at the bottom of the pyramid. The margins might be small, but because of the volume that you have, you essentially are not uh, you're not in a second position. 
So that might be that uh, for that point. Leadership, clearly I see increasing leadership coming in. Uh, most of the U.S. tech firms, I think we know, have Indian leaders or at least there's the diaspora and I see that coming as well. Uh, but that's looking only from a point of view of India outbound in ASEAN inbound. I think there's a focus on ASEAN outbound as well, looking both at technology as well as expansion into India. Pine Labs is a classic example, based out of Singapore, in the payment services, now looking at India in, in terms of expanding. And there are many others. Uh, the unicorns that are there in, in this part of the world have their technology backends in India, and they're looking to expand those and leverage the benefit of that. So when, as I look to the future, I see great, great potential uh, and, and very different from the kind of frame that we have been used to as in an India West slash India East. Uh, I actually think the potential for India East is, is extremely, uh, extremely profitable. On Vietnam and Philippines, I think those will always be there. But the way uh, the sector is moving, I think we're moving into... Uh, a sense where technology skills requirement are going to be far more specialized. These are going to be in cybersecurity. These are going to be in niche areas, uh, cryptocurrency, tokenization in the financial sector, in the health sector. This could be operating large uh, platforms focusing on data protection, etc. And I think there there is opportunities to collaborate. So that's how I see the future. Uh, with those points, that's essentially coming, you know, kind of summing up what uh, what has been said in the panel as well as my thoughts. Uh, looking forward in about 10, 15 minutes that we have, may I invite each of the panelists, now that we know that a digital push is required, one tangible idea that either India or ASEAN could work at, which could help to enhance and push this engagement further. And maybe this time we'll start in reverse order. Uh, Bill, you can go first. Uh, Bill, Jolant, Alok, Kanesan, and Gulu, you can have the final word. Sure. Bill, over to you. I think uh, collaborations, as I mentioned, that Win Win Boss has. And each time, Indian help ASEAN to do digital transformation, introduction, educate that, and help that. Thank you. Thanks, Joel. Do you want to you want to go? Sure. So um, while we do agree that the digital push required and uh, the time is right for the digital push, one tangible thing that we can have is to have a, a set up a framework and uh, a platform between the ASEAN group of countries and India um, and the startups in both of these uh, region to uh, engage with each other and try the market to scale out. So for example, uh, Ben Sriram was mentioning about uh, outbound of ASEAN startups to other regions. So that uh, one big name came in my mind is Grab from Malaysia. Uh, started big to Singapore and even in Cambodia, other countries. And uh, Grab has recently opened office in Bangalore as well, Bangalore in India. So uh, the point is that uh, uh, if there is a one tangible thing to be provided to encourage this engagement is uh, then it would be about creating uh, a platform where there is an open share of knowledge, skills, um, market uh, to the startups across both the regions and uh, also allowing the sandboxing. For example, a startup from India uh, found uh, some innovative product in digital economy and wants to try out at a smaller scale first, then uh, what the concept in startup world, it's called as sandboxing. So that sandboxing or experimenting can be done in one of the smaller countries in ASEAN and then scale it up to other countries. Um, and there are ways that we can do in this way over the platform. Thanks. Alok? Alok, you're on mute. You're yeah, mute, Alok. Hi, thanks. I think for me, for me, the the biggest thing is digital push. So I I uh, visualize a digital economic partnership between ASEAN countries on a similar platform, wherein all the all the member countries can 
can, for, for instance, utilize India's experience in creating a UPI interface. It can be a seamless and interoperable system through UPI. We can talk about India's engagement uh, with ASEAN, which can seamless fund transfer amongst the uh, borders. We can also talk about this partnership, which can enable fintech companies to expand scale, uh, can give an exemption in terms of setting up, so, so cross setting up compliances, those kind of things. Uh, this this partnership can help exchange of startups. For example, Indian startups can go and, and, and experiment in other, other economies. I think we need a digital coordination and mechanism agreement or some kind of a framework wherein the ASEAN countries can talk to each other in a seamless way, which, which can exchange startups, which, which can help uh, easy transfer of payments, easy transfer of employees, easy transfer of technology, easy transfer of human human resource among the ASEAN countries. So for me, digital posts, and if, if we can do it for next 10 years, it will be huge for, for, for all of our countries. Thanks. Panishan? Right, thank you. I had many thoughts, but uh, something struck me, Sri. I think uh, the digital, the, 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 the pandemic has taught us something that we are helpless when it comes to education. Uh, every country, I mean, say maybe Singapore, parts of Malaysia, but we are all helpless and we are losing two, three years of education, right? Uh, and, and India has that, that ability of great education centers. Now, I think EduTech, as you said, uh, the, the, if ASEAN can pick this up, it's 675 million people. You want to talk about cost, per, you want to talk about margin. You can bring your cost, low cost education to everybody as much as possible. And India has done it in its own place in, in the country. Why can't that digital push be part, you know, part of the, 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 the symbi symbiotic relationship that we can create? You know, uh, and that, 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 that is, is great because uh, then you have something that you can grow on as well. India can grow on creating it itself. Second thing is, of course, uh, besides the EduTech, India also needs to understand that at the, at the chat panel uh, earlier that I was watching, they need to create jobs as well. So margin, if it's an issue, well, market is an issue. You need the markets to keep your people employed. So India has to take ASEAN seriously. As but both 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 from the political side as well as uh, as the on the business side, so the missed opportunity is this being is there if we don't take it seriously. Thanks a lot. Uh, thanks, thanks, uh, thanks, Ganeshan. Yeah, I really like the idea that what Alok and Ganeshan said both workable. And I'd like to add to that is have more frequent software trade shows in Bangalore, Hyderabad. And one of the ASEAN countries here, it should be every quarter some kind of a software development trade show to get known. And I like the point that uh, Ganeshan made that there is a lot of unemployment happening in India for the young people in the software industry. Yes, uh, the, the established ones are making big margins, but newcomers. So there is room. I think it needs some push. As we said at the beginning, so you know, find a way to make some push to the right people in the software industry in India to awaken them. So don't ignore what's at your doorstep. You know, it is at the doorstep. We are at the doorstep here of India. So... Thanks, thanks, Gulu. Thanks, Gulu. <coughs> Notice that we have about just about a minute left, so maybe I will I will conclude uh, and sum up. I think it's been a fascinating panel, to be honest. Uh, I've, I've I've really cherished, and I think the insights that have come from the panelists have been quite profound. Uh, just to sum up the the tangible looking forward, the tangible steps that could be taken by both India and ASEAN. Bill spoke about joint ventures and the push towards joint ventures, uh, which is which is extremely important. Uh, Jolan spoke about platforms and the sharing of, and I really like that point about sharing of knowledge, skills, and markets. I think this is important, especially from an India perspective. If you want to seek ASEAN investments in, 
which should also be a push, not just uh, India outbound, but India inbound as well. How can you invite ASEAN startups to come in? Uh, and perhaps one way of solving that is the way Alok said, some kind of a digital partnership through which you can invite these startups in, give them some kind of direction in terms of how they can enter the market, how do they leverage and how do they scale up. Uh, Kanesan's point as always, very, very valid, very insightful. Uh, I think your point on edutech, I completely agree with you, Kanesan. I think edutech is going to be a huge opportunity and I hope Indian companies that are stepping in will take full use of this because I think the market is for them to lose, uh, you know, and they have everything to gain. Uh, Gulu, I think software trade shows, again, a great idea that ties in very well with what Jolan said in terms of, you know, knowledge, skills and markets and how do we showcase this, both from an India perspective and from an ASEAN perspective. I think for now it will have to be done virtually until we can all meet together yeah. and then we can have those, you know, physical foot on the ground kind of shows. Uh, I, I agree ASEAN and India are very close geographically and therefore there is no reason why there shouldn't be an extra effort made in terms of that push uh, beyond the physical and maritime connectivity in terms of digital connectivity and this hopefully will grow. I'd like to conclude with a point that I think Kanesan made which struck a chord with me. Market and margin. You can't ignore this market. It, no. is, a, it, is, it is a market. ASEAN market is huge. It is developing and it, is, it has a great future. And therefore, for Indian software houses, product uh, providers, as well as solution providers, you can't ignore this market. Uh, and so from this panel, the, the bottom line would essentially be stop waiting at the margins, get in the front and center. And with that, with those words, I would like to thank the panelists. I think the panelists have been fantastic. Thank you for sparing the time. And to the audience, thank you again for sparing the time. Uh, stay safe. Enjoy the weekend. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Have a good Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Well done, Sri. That was a good session. Thanks, Bill. Thank you. I, I think we can continue <coughs> to discuss, right? I'll just try to. <coughs> so, see you all. I'm inviting all of you.